everybody, it's Chloe Demir from Save the Victor Roll. How's everybody doing today? Amazing, I hope. Today will be another video from your older than average YouTuber playing with a palette that I managed to borrow from a friend. It is from the Scooby-Doo collection. This is from the first collection. We had done a video playing with one of the other palettes and the highlighter, but this is, she ended up deciding she needed this palette as well. And this is the Creeps and Crawls 10 Shade Palette from Glamlight and it is a gorgeous palette. I thought we could do a little get ready with me and play with the this palette. This is actually a look from this palette. This is not a look that will be that we're doing in the video, but I do have because I did there are three color stories in this palette as you'll see and I did two looks with two of the color stories which I will inspire some video with and then I have the third look which will use the bigger chunk of the colors so if that is something that you're into you that you want to chat um talk things scooby-doo and play with eyeshadow you're in the right place and you know what you need to do you need to keep on watching Okay, so are we ready to play with a, some a Scooby-Doo? So this is the palette that we are going to be doing an eye look with today. This is the gorgeous, stunning color story here, which covers a lot of the colors that are a kind of in the cartoon photos. Um, as we're going along, I'll do a few um, fun facts about Scooby-Doo. We can talk a bit about Scooby-Doo, and I will also put in some videos for a couple looks that I did. Because I would thought if I just do a one look video, I cannot really use all the colors together. So I basically did a look with these two kind of greeny shades. Then I did a look with this blue and this green shimmer. And I thought today we can then use these four and these two. So these six shades today to do a third look. Um, I will, um, why don't we right now intersperse the video of this look right here. Okay, wasn't that cute? All right, and then I did one more look, um, and that was this one here, so let's disperse that right here. And there we go. Those are the two looks that I already did using this palette. And let's get started with this and let's discuss a little Scooby-Doo. So, but of course, first up, we need to prime our eyes. And again, I am still working through my P. Louise rumor too from the broken container. And then we can go. So Scooby-Doo um, was a cartoon that was definitely part of my childhood. Um, when I was younger, because I am Gen X, most cartoons were basically Saturday. So Saturday morning, while our parents were still sleeping, we would um, wake ourselves, we would get up, because of course we're excited for our morning cartoons, which probably started, I think, around 7 a.m. or so. So we'd get up, we would get our bowl of cereal. Um, when I was way younger, there weren't really many, too many sweet cereals, so it was pretty much something like cornflakes with a little extra sugar on there, or something like Weetabix, but um, as I got a little bit older, some of the sugary cereals started, so things like Captain Crunch, Fruity Pebbles, you know, all, like all the ones from the Flintstones, um, Count Chocula, all these great... Um, cereals. So we would sit with our bowl of cereal and probably a glass of milk and we would turn on our TVs. We'd sit, of course, way too close because our parents weren't there to yell, get away from the front of the TV. And we would start our cartoons. So some of my favorites back in the day was like the Jetsons, Josie and the Pussycats, Love the Flintstones, um, Aqua, Aqua Boy, there were so many good um, cartoons. And then when I was about nine or 10, so around 79, I was started getting into anime and Star Blazers was my, was my favorite. And I would watch that because then cartoons would show up a little bit more. So it would be during the week in the morning. So I used to watch that just before school. So, but one, another favorite, and it was especially a favorite of my best friend was a Scooby-Doo, which of course was your weekly mystery um, cartoon. And of course the characters, the main one here we've got here is Scooby-Doo. So Scooby-Doo is um, this crazy dog that talks, dogs talking. 
Um, I wish pets did talk, it would be easier, <laughs> especially like today and taking my cat to the vet. It's easier to ask them what their problem is and try and figure it out. But there we go, but with his Scooby and his love for Scooby snacks, which were, I, I would guess they were dog treats, but um, Shaggy would eat them too. And then this is Shaggy. So Shaggy is Scooby-Doo's best friend and they get into a crap ton of shenanigans together. And of course he's always in his patented green shirt. Um, and yeah, so then um, these two, and the, there they are together, we're always little partners in crime. Though I think we're going to start with the darkest shade in here of the purples. So this one is this one here. I don't have, I don't see any names on them. So it is that shade right there. So that's good. So I won't need glasses for that. So yes. So then next up, kind of the, I would have called him kind of the, the ring leader um is fred and then fred always in his white outfit um red tie blonde kind of surfer dude very kind of that 1970s kind of guy dude <laughs> look going on and then it's been a long time since i've watched scooby-doo but i guess i don't know if they're supposed to be boyfriend or girlfriend or it was hinted at they were boyfriend and girlfriend but then we had the stunning and gorgeous daphne who was, you know, was kind of like the supermodel of the group, I guess, the, the popular girl in her beautiful purple dress. Also with green, like they have, you know, they kind of connected characters together with their um, colors, um, came from a rich family and, uh, and uh, yeah. And then last, but certainly not least, is Velma, the smarty pants of the group and was probably my favorite character as a kid. Um, she was just very smart, um, also very witty. And, uh, and I loved her little outfit, the little sh skirt, the sweater. And then of course I started wearing glasses probably a little bit later. So I think when I got, um, was like a young preteen then I was a little I had even more kind of in I felt that she was a little bit more in common with me but yeah we would have our weekly mysteries um, in haunted mansions and whatever there was a season which I will not show any photos of but there was a season where they interview introduced Scrappy-Doo which was this little doggo friend or cousin or something to Scooby but he was a pain in the butt and I don't think that was one of the better ideas they had in that cartoon franchise was to have um, Scrappy-Doo but I think maybe some people like them I don't can't remember what the reasoning was to bring in Scrappy-Doo, but there we go. So I thought I would at least mention that little fella. Oh, look how intense this is. Isn't this amazing? This glam light is really, really nice. I need to get some of my own, but thankfully Martha is addicted to makeup and she's, um, while she loves it and collects it, she isn't that precious about it that she a lot of times allows me to play with it first, which is amazing. I'm just gonna go blend this out a little bit here. So yeah and then here's a photo of the whole gang together heading out for one of their crazy mysteries which was always solved in one episode. So I do have a few uh, fun facts here. Some you may do know, some you may not, depending on how big of a Scooby-Doo fan you are. If you're a massive Scooby-Doo fan, you probably knew these. I think I only knew one of the facts. And yeah, so let's go. So for number one, I'll just show a cute little photo here. The original title was called The Mysterious Five. Now, if they were very mysterious and running around doing mysterious things, well, I guess I suppose, um, you know, solving murder or murders and kidnappings and whatever else went on in Scooby-Doo back in the day, um, maybe their friends might've thought they were doing mysterious things, but I don't know how mysterious they were and how the title would, um, actually, um, fit. I think Scooby-Doo fits it perfectly. But there we go. So, um, 
And then, second fact too, that wasn't good enough. So that name wasn't agreed on. Then they thought it should be called Who's S -S Scared? So again, kids love to be scared. Um, adults are always so scared, or so scared. Um, don't want kids to be um, shown a lot of frightening things, but for some reason, kids like to scare themselves. And I think that's why, like, especially in the 80s, we got a little bit more of these scarier cartoons, but back in, you know, 60s, 70s, I think par parents um, would think that this kind of cartoon would be a little bit so too scary. So, um, so they thought the title would make it too scary that they wouldn't watch it. So we have, of course, now have our Scooby-Doo, which is based off of the dog, which you know, of course, every kid is going to love. All right. So next up, I think I'm going to go into, let's go from darkest to, to lightest in the mats. We're going to go into that shade right there. And yeah, I'm just going to clean off and use this brush. I like this little brush. And then we're going to go, again, these have no names on them. So this is the the next, it's like a reddish purple. Alrighty, so fact number three that I have for you is, so there were a lot of fun shows in the 60s and 70s that I watched. Things like Gilligan's Island was a big favorite, Love Boat. Um, but they had this show in the, I believe it was the 60s, it was, called the many uh, the many loves of Dobie Gillis and one of the characters actually was one of the characters from um, Gilligan's Island aka Gilligan um, anyway so yeah so that was what Scooby-Doo was the kind of the characters were based off of um, and then here's this funny photo here that shows the characters from the Dobie Gillis and where they got the inspir which char which character from Dobie Gillis was the inspiration towards for the Scooby-Doo character, or I should say the human characters. Though you'll see that Daphne is not in the photo. I think I might have seen one or two episodes of Dobie Gillis, but I don't think that was one that really came into a lot of reruns when I was younger. So I may have in passing watched one episode, but that was it. So our, what's our next fact? Oh, <laughs> Scooby's original name was called Too Much. What a strange name for a dog. Um, doesn't suit him at all. I mean, okay, granted, if they would have said his name was over the top, then I would say that would have been great. But yeah, his original name was Too Much. But I will tell you at the end, end of these facts which is a couple more to go which um what um scooby-doo's full name is in case you didn't know what it was all right so there's that color there i was originally and then i kind of forgot because i was talking about scooby-doo i was originally going to go and try and do a little bit like kind of like Teresa does where she puts a little bit of each of the color across and then brings some of them down but i just kind of autopiloted here and here we are just doing this kind of um gradation and maybe i could do that with the shimmers put them along the edge who knows just or a couple of them just to make sure that we cover them all but uh, there we go. These are very intense. So I'll connect to that a little bit better. Alrighty, so let's go up to our next factoid here. And this one, for, for some of these facts, there was more information, but I didn't want this video to be too long, but a couple of these facts I think needed definitely way more clarification. These don't see, you know, um, they're not obvious, like again, naming um, Scooby-Doo too much um, you know, it's like, yeah, that's a given. The the cut, the original titles of the show, yeah, they didn't work. They're pre pretty obvious. But here, let me put some glasses on for this one. It says here, you can thank either Frank Sinatra or Randy and the Rainbows for the name Scooby-Doo. So it says here, there is some d debate as to the smash song of the 60s inspired that inspired the name Scooby-Doo. It was probably a combination of the two. Frank Sinatra's 1966 hit, Strangers in the Night, um, which features old blue eyes scatting, dooby-doo, dooby-doo, 
do. <laughs> and Scooby Doo's catchphrase certainly echoes that refrain. But the 1963 teen doo-wop sensation Denise by Randy and the Rainbows likely played a big part too. Um, you've don't undoubtedly heard it at some point in a diner going, Denise Shooby Doo, I'm in love with you, Denise Shooby Doo. So there we go. So I thought that was kind of an interesting fact. So I thought I would share that one. Okay, so now we're going to go. All right, so we're now going to go into the lightest shade. So that is that one there. And I will have covered all of the mattes in the palette. Let's see how this one looks. Oh yeah, that's really, really pretty. I like it. Then once we add shimmers, I think that will break up the kind of the lines and the gradation a little bit, but there we go. And then I have two more factoids before I tell you what Scooby-Doo's full name is. I'm just gonna quickly place this here because this next fact may also require a little bit of reading. I suppose, yeah, I always thought about it. I guess maybe later on when, if my my one desk doesn't become a work desk anymore, I could always have a monitor that I could um, have right beside me facts so I can read it. I'm gonna assume that's what like people like Bailey Sarian have when they talk their murder and mysteries and stuff because unless you have an amazing memory, you can memorize all the facts and I do, ooh, I'm liking this, wow. I am not good at memorizing too many facts, but once they're in there, I can, you know, weird things will pop up at weird times. So our sixth fact is there was a different theme song at the very beginning. So it says, speaking of catchy tune, every kid knows the immortal song, Scooby Dooby Doo, where are you? We've got so much work to do now. But however, much like Meet the Funstones, the song did not debut at the start of the series. When Scooby-Doo Where Are You premiered in September 69, so I would have been a couple months old at that point, it opened with an eerie instrumental. The song appeared in the second episode too, a clue for Scooby-Doo, was, but was quickly scrapped thereafter. So there we go. Um, it went from being instrumental to the catchy jingle we all know. And it's kind of like an earworm that once you say it, because as soon as I was um, putting on my bass, I started singing the song this morning and it didn't want to go away. <laughs> so there we go. So I think for along the bottom, I'm going to use this same brush and I'm going to go into the darkest shade and just kind of repeat the colors along the bottom, making sure that I connect my corners really good. And then we can go on to our final factoid that I took. Thought would be interesting. Um, other thing was they would do um, kind of like uh, guest episodes with characters on there. So there was like one with, I believe, Andy Griffith. So they took um, some inspirations from some other cartoons and TV shows and had like guest voices as the big bads, like so. And then before we go into shimmers, we can do our last fact before the Scooby-Doo's a full name. So, and let's say here, and Fred did not have a name in the first episode. And it says um, in, in this, uh, I'll, I'll actually link the article in um, my info box, but it says here, let's rewind to the premiere episode again. Um, what a night for a night. So night like nighttime, night as in, um, in silver armor. Every character is mentioned by name in the episode except for Fred, but he was technically not yet Fred. And the storyboards for the episode still revert to the blonde boy as Ronnie. <laughs> like, um, I don't know, looking at this photo, does he look like a Ronnie? Or is it just that we're used to him being called Fred. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think that Ronnie fits, but, and I'm guessing they did not either because he became a Fred. I guess it ended up being, we're doing a, a little bit more rounded of a look today, but wow, isn't this really pretty? I love that first palette that I tried, but this one is, hmm. Maybe it's a little better. I don't know. 
Alrighty, so let's just quickly before I uh, bring, um, tell you, talk about Scooby Doo's full name, we've got all these shimmers here. So, in the two looks that I showed the videos of, I'd have already used these ones. So, again, we've got these two shades of purple and this kind of more pinkier purple, which I think goes a little bit more with that one there. So, I think <clears throat> I'm going to use, yes, I'm going to put this one here on the outer edge. I'm going to stick that one in the front and I think along the top maybe we'll do that one just so we can try or inner oh maybe we can do oh maybe that's what we'll do we'll do this one in the darker this one in the middle and then this one can be inner corner yeah because sometimes unless I'm doing a spotlight eye I try not to bring my shimmers too high if I can because you know we'll keep wrinkly old lady lids these are a very putty like soft texture I will do um I don't remember them really needing a spray, but I'm going to do the first one with a spray. And then we're just gonna put it on the edge. These are definitely ones that I think um, work really well when you use your finger, but look at, look at this. How beautiful is that? And let's get some on the other. Yeah, so these are very soft. You have to be very careful. Um, while I like, love the shop soft kind of spongy feeling um, shimmers and duochromes. If you're not careful with the brush, you can definitely um, gouge. So be very careful. And then I'll just show you because it's easier to do on the outer edge than the inner. There's the shade there. It's a very dark purple. And then it gets just a smidge more intense when you use your finger. So, and then we were going to use the medium one on front there. So I'm gonna show it with, um, with no spray, we're gonna go and use the second darkest purple shimmer. And then we're gonna throw that along the front here. So it goes on decently without a spray, but I think you definitely get a little bit more of um, payoff. That is really nice. I like that. So. Um, we're just going to do the inner corner and then we can have our last factoid that I have on Scooby-Doo and that is Scooby-Doo's full name. And again, if you're a Scooby-Doo aficionado, you probably know what it is, but if, it, if you're like me and it's been absolutely a yonks age since you've seen an episode of Scooby-Doo, you may have forgotten because I forgot until I read it. So there we go. Oh, this one goes on a little bit darker than what the, oh, I guess it depends on how you shift it. So there it looks darker, but how I, ha I had a head looking, it looked lighter like that, but that's okay. It's a very pretty shade. So our last thing is, what is Scooby-Doo's full name? And Scooby-Doo's full name is Scoobert Doo. And he is forever seven years old or 49 in dog years. And then here's our final group of photo of the Scooby-Doo gang. So there is me so far. So I'm just gonna go and pop on some liner lashes, just clean that teeny bit up there, put on a lip, and then we'll come back for our final thoughts. Okay, we're back, we're done. Yay to a fresh bangs and new brows. <laughs> so here we are. So that is our little chat on Scooby-Doo Creeps and Crawls um, 10 shade palette from Glamlight. Again, refresher of this color story. It's beautiful. I love this eye look. I'm so very happy. It is a lot of fun. So, what do you think? Do you like it? Do you own this palette? I know there was a Scooby-Doo 2 collection and there was a mystery mobile bag. It looked amazing, but I really did enjoy playing with that. First, um, the first one, or part one, or whatever Glam Light wants to call it, I really enjoyed playing with it. So, there we go. That's it. Um, let me know. Did you watch Scooby-Doo? Did you know any of these facts? Are you an uber fan? Are you a sort of a fan? Did you never get into Scooby-Doo but you just liked the makeup? Let me know. Comment down below. 
But other than that, um, if you'd like to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe, and maybe even hit that notification bell, it'd be greatly appreciated. If not, that's okay. We can still be friends. We can still play with Scooby-Doo together. As always, behave, make good choices, and we will talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.